Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to another Monday Morning Art Talk. I'm Steven Silver, character designer and teacher, dedicated to helping you learn about the art industry and living up to your potential. Whippee! All right, so as you guys are watching this, I am currently in Europe doing workshops. So I will not, there won't be videos for the next uh, couple weeks. So I'm just going to encourage you to maybe listen to next week and the week after, listen to some old um, art talks that I've done, if you like. But I also wanted to make this one special. Um, I think it's very important to make sure that you're, you write things down, write your thoughts down. This is going to be an essential part to you uh, creating what it is that you want to do along this ride because you have to put the thoughts down. The thoughts are going to come in and I guarantee you they're going to leave. And even as I'm speaking to you guys now while I'm actually doing a workshop, it makes me think about the time when I do do workshops and people aren't right taking notes. And I realize and I tell them, listen, if you don't write this stuff down, I guarantee you're going to forget it. It's going to be in one ear, out the other. Two days from now, you're going to forget it. So you better make sure you take it down. And this is why you want to make sure that when you have these ideas, jot them down. And I have just different pads. I got like this little tiny book, which is full of drawings and, and writings in it. I have this book. I just got like books all over the house with just, I mean, just filled with, with writings in it. So I just got notebooks all over the place. I just kind of wanted to show you a couple. Um, but they're, they're in all different places because at any time I might have an idea and I realize how quickly it comes in and it goes just like anything creatively can come in and go. You might have that idea for that drawing and sometimes if you don't act on it, that can start to dissipate and oh man, I was trying, I had this vision, I had this thought that I wanted to put down. So those are reasons why it's important to just even have sketchbooks around and just paper around, line paper around, whatever it may be, these are things you want to do. So I thought it might be kind of neat for me just to read some things that I've written. Some of my own personal, these are my own personal journals that I have that are just my my thoughts of consciousness at the time. And it's always amazing to me. And I, creativity is such a fascinating thing. And it, it works in so many realms from writing to drawing to music to whatever it may be. But that it, you can do something and look back and even and go, wow, I, I can't. But did I write that? I don't even remember writing that. And that's because while you do it, you are in a sense you're, uh, I don't know, you, you're, you're not in, you're there, but you're not there. You know, it's just like, it's just like this flow, this freedom. And I hope that you guys have experienced that before. And I know you have, and maybe it's like you even looking back at some of your old artwork and you go, wow, man, I can't even believe that I did that, that I had the patience to do that, that all these different thoughts. And that's the same thing that happens to me when I find writings, I go, God, where was I? And it's really this journal of all these different places that you're going to go and that you've been. And that's the important thing because I'm not always in these places. The things that I've written down, I go, wow, I'm out of that place now. I'm not there anymore. I was there and I was maybe struggling at that point, but I'm not there anymore. It's gone. I wrote it down. I tried to figure it out. So I'm always trying to answer the questions. But anyway, I want to just read a couple of things. I'll just go through these as I'm, I was just flipping and reading and I stumbled on a couple that I'll read and I'll see how it goes. Um, <clears throat> this is a, uh, I guess a little poem that I, that I wrote and I, <laughs> and I wrote, it's hard to do nothing. When I have to work on something, I'll try and get it done. And when I plan for nothing, I feel is, Something should be done. I start to feel uneasy, unsure of what to do. It's probably best to enjoy the moment and make the time for you. So reflecting back on this little thing that I wrote, I realized at that time and I've kept with it. So it's funny that, you know, I have these because I stick with it is if that I'm not feeling it, if I'm not doing that thing that I, that I, you know, I'm not planning anything, I'm not doing that thing, then it's, it's okay to take those moments. It's okay not to constantly be going all the time. And I think as I read this, this is what this means to me. 
is that when I have to work on something, I'll try and get it done. Right. So, OK, I have to work on something. I got a job for the client. OK, I got to get it done, whatever it may be, whatever my responsibility. But and when I plan for nothing, I feel as though something should be done. So when I'm doing nothing and I plan for nothing, I sit around doing nothing. Then you feel guilty. Right. Oh, my God. I feel like I should be doing something. I should be taking action. If I'm not taking action, then I'm failing and I'm not keeping up and I'm blah, blah, blah. And you create this these sort of scenarios in your head. Um, I start to feel uneasy unsure of what to do, which is what happens. It's like, oh my God, what should I do? I should be doing something. It's probably best to enjoy the moment and make the time for you. So that may be just, hey man, just go sit and do whatever you want to do. Do something different. Maybe I find it like I, at moments like that a lot, I realize, what do I do? I take my dogs on a walk or my dog on a walk when at those moments, oh, you know, I can't think of something. Maybe I'm just going to go on that walk and I'll do that. Otherwise, I just go sit, go downstairs and I'll make some coffee. But if you're at a place of work, that's where you just want to go take a break and do things like that. Okay, so doing these things will help you anyway. That was a little interesting uh, thing. Um, but again, there's so many different things that I've written in here. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll read through them on different um, art talks. But this one I'll read because why not? I wrote, there are only two choices. You either work for someone else or you create your own business where you are providing a service for others who find value to benefit their lives somehow through what you offer. You know, I mean, that makes sense. You want any product, anything you do, you're hoping that it is of some value to people because when you provide value and you know, you ask yourself if, if something's valuable, like I'm, I'm going to, it could be a, a meal, one meal over another meal. God, that, that sushi is so much better than that other place, even though they're less expensive for that sushi. This sushi is so much better and the quality's better and that's where the value is. So you're willing to pay more. And you know, again, it's all this common sense stuff and that's what this is all based on, I think. Um, it is a, it is as simple as someone admiring something you have drawn or written or played. The question is, what is it I offer a value? So that's the question one needs to ask yourself. What is it that I offer a value for my, for the studio system? What am I going to offer a value? What do I offer as a, as a book illustrator? Um, uh, just, I mean, a comic book artist, I don't know, you name it, uh, an animator, a storyteller, a, a storyboard artist. What is it? What is it that you offer of value? All right. What can you do that's going to benefit someone else? And are they going to want to buy it when they even when they see it? These are these are tests. These are things that you need to. This is why you need to make sure that you keep putting out content and you keep trying stuff and putting it out there and experimenting just not only for the fun of it, not only for the uh, pure thrill of just having a project for yourself beyond your regular life and your regular jobs, but to really see if what you're doing might lead to something you don't know. I found for me, my teaching that I started doing 20 years ago led to something. I just started it. I wanted to start it because I felt it. I felt the urge and I started to realize the value of it for other people and myself. And I realized that, hey, this is something that I got to keep pursuing and, and doing. Um, so the question is, what is it I offer value? Is it I sing, I write, I draw, maybe I organize, I design furniture, I inspire, I build teams, I paint portraits, I paint landscapes, I etc. What is it? What is the thing that you can offer that you do that can be a value? And again, it's not just that it's art because your skill set, your, your ability to organize is, is, is a very powerful thing. You know, most artists and myself included are very, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I'm, I'm not a horrible organizer, but I'm not, it's not my strength. All right. So, but there's people who have that strength and they're great at organizing. They're great. And they're artists and they, this is, Hey, how can I use my organizational strength to do that? Hey, how can I use my programming ability to mix with this? Hey, how can I use my, whatever it is, that thing? Cause there's other stuff just beside the art that you, that you have. How can I use the music? 
that I've, that I've studied my whole life and incorporated in my, my voice talent. Maybe I'm good at doing voices and I could offer my service to, to students at schools who would need voice actors for their short films or something. I don't know. This is where you just kind of think about that. What is that thing? And then I wrote this. Ooh, look at this. The secret to life. Here we go. What's the secret of life? Uh, let me see what I wrote. The secret of life is. Okay. Um, determine what it is you can offer. Everybody has something. Is that it? Is that maybe the secret of life? Determine what it is you can offer. Maybe that's a good secret of life. Maybe that's something that has a huge, tremendous value. And maybe it's why, what does an avocado tree have to offer? What does an apple tree have to offer? You know, it's like, what, what can you offer? What, what, what do bees offer? What, do, what does nature offer? Just all these things. Maybe that's a good thing, you know, because everybody has something to offer. So even though maybe your skill set isn't to where you want it to be right now, you're working on it, you're doing that, you're determined, you have something eventually to offer somebody. Trust me, it's all freaking connected. We are all connected in some mysterious, crazy way, but it is, there's, without doubt, there's a connection that whatever you may give or say to someone today might affect them uh, two years from now, we don't know. It's all a big circle here. Um, let me see. You have determined what you can offer. Okay, so not, maybe I'm putting this as... Uh, okay, so determine what you can offer. Uh, I think maybe I wrote here too. Find the resources that relate to what you do. What have you seen? What have you heard? Okay, so finding the resources. So now that you know that, you know, determine what it is you have to offer. That's a hard thing to do. That's not going to come easy, but determine what that may be. Again, you may be a storyteller and you want to create a book that tells the story. Maybe, maybe you had cancer. And I'm going to just say this because I know, I know someone who wrote a book about it and I have a friend, some friends who have had cancer and a friend who made books from, uh, from when you had cancer. Um, but maybe you had cancer. And so now the next thing is find the resources that relate to what you do. What have you seen? What have you heard? And now, now you want to start researching different aspects of, I want to make a children's book about cancer. So now you start researching that. You start you're talking about your experience. You start going through the things that, what have I, but then other books written. What books are written out there? Who's done it? Who's it, why is it effective? How have they told it? Have, has it sold many copies? You start do, trying to find things like that. Um, so then the next thing is start acquiring the resources, knowledge, and equipment. Um, and then as you complete an aspect of it, you move on to the next until you have finished what you set out to begin. Okay, so once you figured out what it is you want to do, you're creating this book, you found all the resources, the next thing you complete, you know, um, do everything in your power to now, it's up to you to finish that book, make it, get that book finished, get it started. Okay, so now, um, you, from that point, once you've done something like that, again, there's so many different uh, areas you can go into this, and I'm using more book publishing as, a, as an idea behind this. But once you've done that, well, then you got to look into, you know, I'm going to set up at what shows am I going to set up? And am I going to self-publish? Am I going to present this to a hospital and maybe a committee and maybe work something out with them? I don't know. What are these things that you're going to do? Okay. Then the next thing, then you begin the journey of maintaining what you began. All right. So this is very important that once we establish and we know what we want to do, I want to get into animation, I want to be an illustrator, I want to be whatever that is, character designer, storyboard artist. The next thing you always, I want to be a, you know, children's book author, whatever it is. Now you've developed this. You've determined what it is you want to do. You've internal, determined what it is going to require for you to even get there, for you doing the research and uh, gaining the knowledge and gaining the experience and gaining the, um, any classes, whatever it is that you need. But then now it's up to you of just maintaining that. So the rest of your journey, you're going to be maintaining what this thing is that you've started of value. For instance, what I'm maintaining right now, which I, what I started was my teaching. That's what I love. That's my value. That's my passion. That's my 
That's my bliss. That's my purpose. That's everything that I'm supposed to do. So what do I have to do now? I have to maintain that. All right. So that's just keeping things going, keeping things moving, just like any anything in nature, a tree. Um, after a while, you start to lose interest and um, want to do something else. Um, so I would say too, this is going to happen with many different factors. I've lost interest in many other areas of art that I wanted to do. And now I'm at, been at that phase of teaching for so long that I have found, you know, this was, I don't know when I, when I wrote this, but I have found now that teaching is that thing. I'm just going through these different phases and realizing I'm going to try this now. I'm going to do this now, but it doesn't have to be forever. And the minute you let go of forever, the more freedom you create for yourself because you are not just saying that this is it. There's not just the one ticket. There's not just the one way. There's not just the one train, the one boat. There's multiple uh, the, the routes. There's multiple things that you're going to be going through. Okay. But, and then when this happens, what I've written is start over and repeat process one through eight. What I've sort of gone through here is just like once you get to that point where you've found what you want to do, you start working towards it, you make it happen, you maintain it, you make it a reality, you start to get bored of it, you start to lose interest. Now it's time to change and move on to something else. And now you just repeat the cycle because that's what it is. It's just a repeating of the cycle um, once you've determined what it is that you have to offer. Okay. Um, let's see what else I wrote here. It's harder for animation production artists to find their natural style because they have been influenced by so many. We have a piece of all our inspiration. We're not supposed to paint alone. Constantly get inspired because why not? It, it feeds, feels wonderful to be inspired. So live a life of inspiration. That is bliss. Where do you find your inspiration? All right, so, the, you know, it doesn't relate to what I just talked about here. This is something different, but just trying to find style. So this is a whole different thing. Let's see what else I wrote. It's not about what you're working on. It's about are you content with what you do? Once you're content with what you do, it does not matter what you work on. <laughs> the creativity and ideas will flow as long as you are going to enjoy the process. If not, what's the point? There it is. You know, I just kind of like said it, you know, it's all that, you know, it's not about what you're working on. It's about, are you content with what you do? So that's going to be very important. That's going to be the driving force. You're going to work on some horrible projects. And but if you're content with, say, as a character designer, but you love design and you're so content with this, you're going to be working on things you don't want to do. But you know what? You're going to work through it because you're content being that sort of artist. You still enjoy that process. You know, that's the reality of it. All right. Let's let's keep going here. Uh, let me see. What is this? Expose on a creative composition. Just be sure. Caden asks, what is your greatest fear? Uh, I want a safe journey for my... So my son asked me, what is my greatest fear? And I responded, I want a safe journey for my kids. That's all. All right. Let's see. Uh, okay. I don't know what this is. So let's see. Why am I here? <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, why am I here to support my family? So I was always asked, I always, I ask questions for myself. And I think that's an important thing just to remember. It's just ask yourself the question, the thing that's struggling in your mind, the things that is doing in your mind, just ask the question. But can you see maybe the helpful benefits of having a journal and writing things down? Um, again, you're going to be at different phases. So let's see what I, what I wrote here. Uh, why am I here? I wish I had dates on these. This is this is what I learned right now. I got to start putting dates on this because I don't know when this was all written. Why am I here? Um, I'm here to support my family and give them a comfortable life and help inspire and guide other people. Why do I teach? Because I am unfulfilled as a production artist and I know I am an effective teacher that I can change people's lives. I teach because it is fun different, challenging. It forces me to think of new approaches. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. So, you know, it's so asking the question, why do I teach? So why do I paint? Why do I do storyboards? Why do I want this? Why do I, why do, why do I want to live here? Why do I want to work there? Ask yourself the question. Um, how can I have more fun? I must know why I want more fun. Why do I want more fun? I didn't even answer the question. I must know why I want more fun. Why do I want more fun? I think I want more fun. I don't know. I think having fun is fun. I think having fun is enjoyable and relaxing and changes uh, you out of your everyday normal existence of whatever it may be. I mean, I think, I don't know. Why, why else would you want to have fun? So you, um, why do I not want to work? Why do I want more people to know who I am? I think it will somehow generate um, just more awareness. Um, but living should not be about working all the time. Amazing, amazing. Why do I constantly keep thinking about living simpler in a different place, a smaller place? Because I think it will give me more free time to be with my family. Life is about having new experiences. Uh, the two factors in my life, work and family. The reality is, as a creative person, I want to work all the time. Developing, drawing, teaching. The element that holds the process, that process back is family, which is most important. More than anything, what I need. So to bounce between the two forces work that I don't want. This is truly my greatest struggle. If I work too much, I won't see my family. They will miss me and I will cause tension. So it's interesting because right now I'm not at this place, but I can say that thinking about this, I don't know, was I, when, when did I write this? And it may have been a few years ago and thinking about, I remember when I had my school and it was taking up so much time. And I was working and doing all the stuff all the time that 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 was a big struggle that I was having maintaining that and that balance. OK, but what did I do? I made a choice to stop having my big school and close that down because that was the sacrifice. You got to make the sacrifice. I knew I needed change. Do I keep that going and struggle? And but I know I know that I made the change because of that. Um, if I work too little on what I want to do and accomplish, if I work too little on what I want to do and accomplish, I feel withdrawn and motivated. So if I'm not working on enough of my own stuff, which I do all the time, I feel withdrawn and motivated. That I, so this is, I know, so the, I, this is what I'm saying. I, you, you write these things down. And this is this is very therapeutic for me, too, as I'm reading through this to you guys, and I hope it's helpful for you guys. Um, the question is, what is the balance? What is the solution? Because family is first. The reality is I must accept the path for eight or nine more years. Oh, eight or nine more years. So that's a clue. That tells me because I remember a lot of my philosophy is like your responsibility as a parent is from zero to 18. Not that you abandon your kids at 18, but as a parent legally responsible. So 18. So now my kids are only one year and two years away from... Um, from from being my son 16 so two years away from being 18 so this was eight or nine, this was a long time ago uh like six six years seven years ago um until the kids are off to college okay because okay family first the reality is i must accept this path for eight or nine more years until the kids are off to college in the scheme of things it's a short amount of time I do not want to miss out on their childhood. So keep it all as simple as possible right now. Knowing this is why I have the desire to live in a smaller place. I don't want to have the pressure of feeling that I need to um, earn much money. Then I may be able to truly accept my path for the next 10 years. Uh, so this is G, this is awesome. This is so cool is you, the driving force, you can hear I'm talking about money, I'm talking about these things, these are real world problems, these are things, but I know just sort of like keeping things simple, and this is always the main, the main thing, keep it as simple as possible, and, and it's funny because sometimes I think that, 
aha, I had the light bulb go off in my life two years ago. Like, uh, I think like the one of the biggest things that I've talked about is when I talk about the word surrender. That just kept showing up all the time. And I realized that's the, another secret to life that I know now that I have. I even I write it on my hand every day as, ther as a therapy, really. It's a mantra. It's a, it's a meditation. That's why I do it. And But what it does is just knowing that stuff is like, I think like, oh, two years ago, I really came to that fruition with that. I really understood the concept. But I realized as I'm even reading through this and I know, no, it's been so much longer. I've had this awareness and, and, not, and not letting my mind take over everything and just me being able to control my thoughts. And I've been doing that forever. And I, and I think even further back to when I was even 18 and things that I was, my mindset of 13 and the things that I wrote down and I put them on my, my bedroom uh, closet door because I always open up my closet door every day. And there it is on the closet door is just uh, life is a party to which you've been invited. Are you going to sit on the sidelines or join in the dance? Yoda, do or do not, there is no try. And these things that were 13, so it's always been there and it's cool, you know. Uh, life is not about settling. It is about experiencing as many different experiences as possible and places worked, places lived. This is, uh, you know, so anyway, I, I, I'll, I'll read more at some other times, but I guess I just kind of, that was fun, you know, for to just really share these thoughts with you, but really share the importance and the power of writing your thoughts down, becoming clear. I remember telling my friend when I was 18 years old that because he was always so in his head all the time and I kept saying, dude. Write things down on paper, get it out of your head, put it on paper, let your paper have the problems. And I always remember that and I've always done that and I don't know why I did that or what for what reason, but all I know is that I can do it and act on it and now I can share it. And that's a powerful thing. Write these things down, answer the questions because oftentimes... The, you're all those thoughts that are like, you know, just acting like a wrench in your head are just these, these projections of oftentimes nothing that aren't even real, that don't even exist. And oftentimes you find all the things that you think you want, you already have, you already possess from the family, the friends, the, the shelter, the ability to go on vacations, the ability to go and out to dinner and the ability to whatever it may be. You have these things. So these is why uh, you, you got to write these things down and get out of your head and become clear, as clear as possible. And uh, is there ever going to be a point in your life where, boom, you just like this, boom, snaps into pure clarity, pure awareness. Boom, I've figured it all out. I've figured out life's mystery and it's all clear. And the answer is no. I don't believe that's possible. And I say that not only one, because I was searching for that. I've always searched for the answers. I was always searching for maybe Norman Rockwell has the answers. Let me read his biography. He's going to tell me how to be a good dad and, or raise kids and be a dad and do that. Or, or this artist, that artist. And, and I realized, no, they don't have the answer. No, they don't have the answer. Then I go to philosophy, religion, you know, all these different things. No, no answer, no answer, no answer. No one has that, that answer. We all live in this thinking that there's, there, there's that ultimate thing. All I know is that when you surrender, when you just sort of just let, let it be acceptance of fate, amor fati, acceptance of fate, and just get to that point and, and just realize that this is it. This, this is it. This is it. It's not anything else other than where you are right now, constantly making those little steps along the way. One small step at a time. One small step for man. That's all you're ever doing. That's all. And as I look back upon my life and where I'm at today, that's all I've ever done. It's always just been one step leading to another with some form of um, unknowing. But yet, and not trying to know, or thinking I, I needed to know, but then eventually, no, 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 I don't need to know, it's just going to happen. And then I look back and go, damn, man, it's always just kind of happened. 
Everything has always just gone from one thing to the next. And that's all the, just by me acting. So I had to act. I had to do. I had to participate. I, this is the, you know, this is it. I had to join the party of life. That's what I had to do, but I had to come to terms and decisions of what it is I even wanted to do. Know what it is that I can offer a value. And it comes back to where we started with this, and that's the important thing. I knew I want to do caricatures at that time. I want to do caricatures live and get paid for it and do parties and do work at theme parks. That's what I wanted to do then. Do I have the desire to do that now? No. It changes. It always changes. And, and as long as you keep sort of like at least attempting to try new things and eventually something will come of it. Or you can stay there if you're comfortable staying there. You can get, you can stay wherever the hell you want. You can be as comfortable as you want. You want to sit in one place and you're comfortable there. Stay there. Don't feel the need to move. Don't feel the need to go beyond because of the pressures of other people, of what you think other people are experiencing or what you see in other people's lives. Because it doesn't matter. Because all that matters is your life. All that matters is your journey. All that matters is what you're going to experience within in your life. And this is where, unfortunately, social media has fucked it up for everyone and just messed it up. Because you constantly looking into other people's lives and thinking that you have to maintain or live up to or get to that level and be that person. And when you're not, that's what makes you starting to feel bad about yourself. And that's the, that's the honest truth. That's the honest truth. If you can go deep in there, if you can truly go inside yourself and be honest and truthful with yourself, you know that's one of the main elements that is a driving force that irritates the fuck out of you and, and, and destroys you from, from even charging the right amount of money because you don't even believe enough in yourself because you're comparing yourself to the other people that you're seeing. I don't know that I'm really worth that much. I'm not as good. And so then you'll forever keep your rates low and rates down because you don't even believe in yourself. So the, the most important factor is the belief in yourself and just the power of trying, the power of evolving and the power of just moving forward one step going to the next. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have those days of just disappointment and feeling like something is bothering you. So all you can do and a therapy for me is writing it down. You write it down, try to get to the core of it. See if it, maybe it's not coming out in your artwork, but it's coming out in your writing ability that you didn't even know you had. And you start putting that stuff down. That's where the power starts to really come from and that's when you truly learn who you are and learn what your weaknesses are and learn what you need to do to empower and improve upon yourself because there's something worthwhile about that so that you can live a life of your potential what is it i don't know you know, I mean, maybe you don't know right now because maybe you haven't explored enough, experimented enough. Maybe that's what's been stopping you. These things Hey, listen, this is this is it. You don't want to enter that, go into that life of regret. And if you're at that point right now where you're having regrets about stuff, once again, write it down and change it. What are you having regrets about? Maybe you're thinking you have more regrets about stuff than you truly actually have regrets about. Maybe you only have regrets of three or four things in your life over, you know, the 50 things that you think you have regrets about. So think about what those are and then think about, well, is it something I can change? Is it something I can alter right now? And that's going to be another part of this. So it's going to be, uh, listen, it's all up to you. It's all up to you. Write it down. Put it on paper. There's a true power to it. I hope this helped you. Um, this was fun for me reading through those notes. I got them all over the place. I'll read more in another time. And for those of you guys who are seeing this while I'm in Europe, um, I'll see you around. Okay. And um, all right. Make it a great week. Take care. To subscribe to my mailing list and stay updated on future workshops and events, please go to my contact at silvertoons.com and simply hit 
join mailing list. Until the next time, make it a great week and thank you for listening.